After finishing work and driving to Melbourne, we caught the 12.15am overnight flight from Melbourne to Auckland. Okay, so we've arrived in Auckland, New Zealand. It's been a nice little flight. Car's okay, can't see any marks on it. Just a little bit dirty. It was the first time Beck and I had ever been on an international trip without the kids. So we wandered into this big square in the middle of Auckland here and stopped at the container. It's a coffee shop, posty shop, ice cream shop. Uh, just to get our day started, what have we got? Coffee milkshakes. Grabbed <laughs> ourselves the longest drink in town, iced coffee milkshake. Okay, hopefully we'll get up the top here so we can get some good views of Auckland as we pull out. Okay, so the trip to Davenport on the ferry, well worth it, pretty scenic, uh, fast, about 10 to 15 minutes over here. And really good value to see the city from the distance, to see the other side of Auckland. So we've just realised after getting into Devonport that we have not had anything to eat today. So we've come to the Devonport Public House. Public House to have a beer, a local beer, and some fish and chips. So we've arrived at Hamilton Gardens here. Uh, actually, lots and lots of cars here, so I'm expecting good things. The Italian Renaissance Garden. No wonder it's like the main attraction in Hamilton. Heading into the Indian Garden now. Visiting Hamilton Gardens was never really part of our, our itinerary or plan. We really just needed somewhere to break up the journey between Auckland and Rotorua. But boy were we surprised and thankful that we actually stopped there. It's an amazing set of gardens broken up into themed areas that represent different parts of the world. We were totally blown away by this place and rank it as one of the best places we went to in New Zealand. Okay, we're definitely on the right way. I see exit, I see toilets. I see let's go this way. This afternoon finds us in Rotorua in New Zealand. We're gonna check out the Thursday night night market that's on every week, see what we can find. So you'll find it right in the center of Rotorua. Oh, this looks really good. Chicken. Chips, barbecue, burgers, iced teas, South African food over there, Mexican food over here, oh roast pork baguettes, dumplings, oh first block down, we're still going. Okay so it looks like we've come out of a food section here and there might be a little bit of like a variety section, looks like I can see some clothes and such. It's my first time in Rotorua, uh, seems like a pretty nice town, we only just arrived a few hours ago so this is the first thing we've done is come down here to have a look at this. So we traveled down from Auckland today. Auckland was about, I think somewhere around 220 kilometers away. So we stopped in Hamilton on the way before we arrived here. Six 
<laughs> Some nice looking food here. So, this is our chips, beef, cheese. Let's give it a try. Okay, let's have a go at the beef. Sort of a bit like jerky. Sort of a dried beef, but um, really, really nice. Really chewy texture. Let's finish our evening off at the night market here with a real fruit ice cream. Check out my strawberry waffle cone. So it's fresh fruit, so that is pulp the fruit with a bit of ice and turn it into ice cream. So it is amazing. And it's amazing too. So we've had a good little explore here in the Rotorua Street Market tonight. Okay, this evening in Rotorua finds us at the Redwoods Tree Walker. Been looking forward to this one for a while. I've seen lots of YouTube videos on it. So we've come to check it out. We're gonna walk up there amongst these giant trees tonight. All through this amazing forest. For some it might seem strange that there's a Californian Redwoods forest in Rotorua, but it was planted in the early 19th century because the wood was good for building. These days the forest is popular for mountain bikers, walkers, hikers and horse riders. It's actually ranked as one of the top 10 mountain biking destinations in the world. It's a really cool place to visit just outside the centre of Rotorua. Rebecca loves good uh, hike activity. Said no one ever, especially her. Because they're always part of the attraction. Rebecca basically ran across here. Actually, it's pretty cool, really. I'm taking my time. Because tickets to this attraction were $39 US a person. Not US, sorry. New Zealand a person. So we're up to the first platform. Some nice little information signs here. They tell you you can touch the bark here, but not to touch the trees because it takes so long for the bark and the trees to grow that they'll never grow back if everyone touches them. So makes maximum eight people on the bridge at a time and 20 people on the platform, which is really good because you don't want to have too many people out here at once. It probably spoils the, the experience. This is a really cool experience in Rotorua. Sometimes you can come at night time as well when it's all lit up like we said earlier, but hopefully we'll get to see a little bit of both lights and daylight. finish off, uh, I had a really good time at the Redwoods here in Rotorua. Uh, we did a bit in day and a bit in night. I think the day was definitely way more stunning than night. There's some really good lights at night, but you don't get to see the scale of the trees and the beauty of them when you're at night, but definitely well worth coming here. On our first day in Rotorua, we headed to the Polynesian Spa. Polynesian Spa is home to waters and pools that are heated by the geothermal activity in the area around Rotorua. Let's try the first pool. How hot is it though? Oh yeah, it's warm isn't it? Yeah. Very hot. What makes the spa a popular location is that it's located on the banks of Lake Rotorua so you can get some stunning views from the pools. There's many different pools located within the complex, plus spa activities, cafe, gift shop, all the things that you'd find at one of the top attractions in Rotorua. Here we go on the reflexology walk here at the Polynesian Spa in Rotorua. We went to the Maori living village in Rotorua to learn about some of the Maori culture of the island. Uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce a name because I will actually butcher it and do no justice to it at all.
So this is one of the cooking methods they use. Uh, they just put their food in there, cover it up because there's so much geothermal activity here in Rotorua that they can cook anything they want. So we're having a piece of corn cooked in the fennel pool. How is it? Well, as you can see, my bit's gone, so it's very good. <laughs> But we went on a guided tour and the guide explained a lot of things about their culture, about the geothermal activity in the area. After having dinner at Food Street in Rotorua, we walked down to Government Park. Government Park's home to a Tudor designed looking building that's now home to the Rotorua Museum. You'll find a few geothermal pools bubbling around. It's a great place to actually go and see them for free where you don't have to pay. Uh, it's a lovely green area of Rotorua to go for a walk in the evening. On our return to Auckland we headed straight to Mount Eden. It's not very high, about 196 metres in height, but it gives you some of the best 360 degree views you'll see of Auckland and the surrounding areas you can find anywhere. Okay, so here we are at Voco in Auckland. Okay, so we just checked into Voco in Auckland and this is our room. Voco is home to Bar Albert on the rooftop of the hotel. Inside there's plenty of seating in this stylish little area. Bar Albert has stunning views of Auckland and the surrounding area. You can especially get a great view of the Auckland Tower from the top floor. Hey, does the Voco in Auckland not have the most scenic toilet in the world? Check this out. Like all good hotels, Voco offered a really good breakfast every morning. One of the advantages of staying at a hotel that has free breakfast is it saves money in the long run on meals during the day. We headed to the Auckland War Memorial Museum. Uh, it's part War Memorial, part museum. Had some really good galleries in it. Uh, we enjoyed our time there, learnt a little bit about the history of New Zealand in the First and Second World War. Being Australians, uh, we knew a bit about it because it's closely tied to the Anzac spirit. The museum had dinosaurs, uh, planets, all sorts of really interesting stuff to fill in some time. Alright, repeat my hole in one because we didn't film it. What's a short holiday without some fun? We tried a game of mini golf at Holy Moly in Auckland. The Auckland Sky Tower is 186 metres high. You can go to the top and get some really good panoramic views or if you're an extreme sports fan, you can either abseil and jump off the side of it. The realities of checkout day, no matter what type of hotel you're staying at, is stuff everywhere as we get our bags ready to check out of Voco here in Auckland. Piha is one of the most well-known beaches in New Zealand. It's a short drive from Auckland, about 45 minutes to an hour, through a winding road, through a forest, uh, really scenic. Uh, when you get there, you're greeted by a black sand beach and some really scenic and rugged sea stacks coming out of the water. It's a great place to go for a walk and have a stroll, enjoy the ocean, enjoy the sun if it's out on that day, but uh, really worth a drive down to have a look at hey, Piha. Mark's making a little friend. I actually think for a little bit there, he's actually just going to come up and take a bite out of your oh, pie. <laughs> we were looking for something to do on our last day here in Auckland and we needed to kill a few hours in the afternoon before checking into our airport hotel, so we decided we'd come to the Auckland Zoo. It's a bit muddy, which is where I wiped my bum this morning. Did a bird poo. 